Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the smallest 720p projector I've seen yet. This is the Zhouya T8. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Zhouya T8. This is a super small, compact mini projector, and at the moment, is for a ridiculously low price on Amazon US. At the moment, it normally would retail for $99. Currently, there's a $50 off promotion. So you can pick this up for $49, which is pretty insane for a projector. So for those of you in the UK, if you want to get it shipped to you, you'll be looking at about £40 for this, which again, for a projector, £40 is not a lot of money. It's very, very affordable. So let's go through some of the things we get inside the box and then we'll have a tour around the unit itself and then I'll show you some examples of the footage I've managed to get out of this little beauty. So first of all, being this is from Amazon US, we had a American power cable, which not a lot of use for me, but it's the traditional kind of uh, figure eight lead. So you can either get an adapter or just use one of the leads you've got lying around or certainly just chop the end off and put a UK 13 amp plug on it, which is exactly what I did. Next up in the box, you get a two meter HDMI cable. There is also a set of AV cables. So if you've got older devices such as Nintendo Wii or maybe an old camcorder or something like that, you can plug it in quite easily. So that is the kind of 3.5 mil jack into the three phono and video adapters. If that isn't long enough, you also get an extension lead as well for the AV type. So that's the, the red, the yellow and the white. Again, another two meters on that one. You get a pretty decent owner's manual, goes through all the specifications and how to use the remote control, all that kind of stuff. And obviously you also get a remote control. So this little handy remote control, again, very small as is pretty much everything in here. And in fact, the remote control isn't a lot deeper than the actual top of the unit itself. But you've got all the usual features on here. So changing source, play, pause, up, down, left, right, menu, exit, zoom, all the functions that you could possibly need. Two of the ones which I find which are particularly helpful or particularly useful potentially are the uh, the mode buttons at the top and that changes the display. So if you're having it mounted upside down on a ceiling mount or some kind of reverse mount, then you can just press those buttons and it switches the views over really easily rather than having to delve right into the menu, which I find very helpful. So let's take a quick look at the box. So this is the packaging that comes in. Again, not very elaborate, easily recyclable but does the job and it's very well padded inside. So if you are having this ship from the US, then you should find it arriving in tip top condition. But obviously being this is an Amazon product, if there's any problems, then Amazon are very good at sorting out those kinds of things. So on the box, it says there, 720p LED projector, which is exactly what it is. This is native 720p, but it will support 1080p inputs. In fact, it will support various inputs, which I've tried uh, 4K, all those kinds of things, and it just downscales it to 720p. And also to be fair, if you've seen previous reviews I've done on the channel of other projectors, the 720p output isn't that far off the 1080p of some of the other more expensive models, so bear that in mind. So not really a great deal on the packaging itself, it just mentions things like high brightness, good color uh, reproduction, hi-fi stand, and HD quality. So that's the box. So let's take a look at this little thing. Now this is fantastic. It's so small, so compact. And actually, if I go for the measurements, I'm pretty sure it's eight by six by three, but we'll double check anyway, because, well, I've got a ruler handy. So width-wise, we are looking at exactly eight inches. So for those of you working in metric, that is 200 mil. The depth from front to rear is six inches. So you're looking about 15 or 150 millimeters. And the height of the unit is three inches. So that is about uh, 75 mil thereabouts. Yeah, about 75 mil. So this thing is pretty tiny. So on the front, we've got our lens and removable lens cover, which is nice and easy to get to. You've also got the uh, branding on the front and a IR receiver. On the top, you've got your focus wheel, and also a keystone correction wheel. Now the keystone correction wheel, there isn't a lot of movement, if I'm completely honest, it's about 15 degrees of movement up or down, so you are gonna to have to get this relatively level with the uh, intended display area. But having said that, very easy to do. Also on the top, you've got your 
manual controls. So you've got a power button, mode button, a screen button, a return button, up, down, left, right, and OK for selecting. Also, there's an indicator light on the top to tell you if the unit's in standby or whether it's on. Obviously, when it's on, it's pretty easy to tell because there's a very bright light coming out the front of it. Moving on to the side, so we've got two USB ports, um, so you can power devices. So say you've got a Chromecast or a Amazon Fire TV stick, or maybe you want to use one of the uh, cables to convert your mobile phone into a display of, uh, adapter. So you can plug in your phone to one and use the other one to get power. No problems whatsoever. You also got a HDMI port. You've got a AV port, which we talked about earlier for the AV connections. And also there's a headphone port. So if you want to listen to your movies or music or whatever it is you're listening to, maybe your favorite series, you can just plug your headphones in, watch it on a large screen and not uh, distract or annoy anybody else, which is really good. And for those of you on slightly older equipment, there's the good old VGA connection. So you can run that as well. Obviously, if you are running VGA, you are going to have to find some other way of getting your audio through because this is display only, no audio. There isn't actually an audio input which will help out with that, so bear that in mind. Moving around to the rear, we've got another IR receiver. So again, depending where you're mounting this, if you're sat behind it or sat in front of it, you can still control it easily enough, no problems at all. That is a exit for the fan, so all the hot air is going to be coming out of there. This side is a high quality speaker. There's only one speaker in here, so it is a kind of uh, down mix stereo, but actually does sound very nice, very rounded sound. Considering the small size of this, it does sound fantastic. Moving around on to the other side, so we've got our uh, figure eight lead input for the power, which I would have actually preferred to have seen on the back, um, or maybe keep all of the connections together on one side, just so you can route your cables out nicely. But again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it works very well. And talking of very works very well, the whole look of this thing actually looks very, very premium. So the top is kind of like a, a satin matte finish in a kind of, uh, I would say as a gunmetal gray. And you've got all sorts of accents around the side. So you've got this kind of mesh effect around the side, which looks really nice. And the grills are all really well made. There's no uh, sharp edges, it's all round off nicely. It doesn't feel like a cheaply made product. It actually feels very premium. Moving right on to the base. So the base is actually one of the more interesting things for me personally, because this is one of the first projectors I've seen which actually has a built-in quarter inch thread. So you can put this onto a, a basic camera stand or tripod, whatever you want to do. There is also a, an adjustment wheel on the bottom, so you can unscrew that. So if you're putting it onto a desk maybe, you can have it raised or lowered to suit where your display is. So that's really nice. But the inclusion of the quarter inch thread on there for me is a welcome addition. So we've gone through all the features and specs, so let's talk now actually about the quality of it. Now, I'll show you some footage which I've taken earlier of various things I've watched. I've got some downloaded stuff from Pixabay, which is a free site for getting videos and other copyright free material. So you'll be seeing that up in the screen now, hopefully. And um, we watched some things, also some of my mics unboxing videos. So we've got a couple of those videos which are 1080p. The footage on the uh, rocket launch was also 1080p and there's a mixture of 720p and 4k footage for the desert as well so between all those they all look very good the luminosity or the brightness is 3200 lumens so it's actually quite nice and bright it isn't really bright enough for those kind of powerpoint presentations in a brightly lit office that kind of thing but for the kind of like the den or the living room where you've got the curtains closed or you've got a little bit darker then you should find it absolutely fine in complete darkness, it looks fantastic, and the color reproduction, and the fact it's only 720p, you really, really don't notice it. It does come out really, really nicely. And again, the sound quality from that one speaker uh, does get very loud, but also is also very controlled as well, so it's not a really highly distorted. It sounds really good. So there we go. That is the Zhoya T8 mini projector. Very tiny size, very tiny price. Great specifications, again, 720p, 3200 lumens, all the inputs you could possibly want for a really small price. So I'll leave some links in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, you can hear it's not great. And actually, the fan itself, there's a little bit of movement on the axis, slightly more than the other one. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip the car down, give it a good clean, give it a new helping of thermal paste, courtesy of Arctic MX4, 
and also we're going to put some oil into the fan bearing to hopefully make it uh, sound a lot better and perform a lot better. Now before we go ahead and do all that, I'm going to go through some of the greases and lubricants I've got here and I'm going to suggest which are good ones to use and which ones you should probably try and avoid. Now the ones you should try and use ideally for this kind of setup is like a sewing machine oil or something like that. Now I've been really lucky if I can find it somewhere, but there it is. Now I've got a set of hair clippers from Warner, which actually you can check the review, which is up over here. And it actually comes with some kind of This is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews and How To. Yeah, it's that time again. We've got ourselves a cheap GPU, but the fans are knackered. So let's try and sort them out. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking our Radeon R9 380X apart and hopefully restoring the bearings to their former glory. Now uh, this card was actually a suggestion from somebody on our Discord server. I'm not sure whether it was Glenn or maybe it was Seaman Knight, I can't remember which one, but one of them is definitely to blame. Now this GPU is the R9 380X 4GB version and this was on sale. Actually there was a bunch of them for sale, which myself